I love you. That's the kindest thing people have ever said to me. And that was my first husband. He was the man of my dreams. I met him when I was in college. He was the most handsome man you ever saw on campus. And say we've gone mad and lost our mind. So who cares? Cause it's true. Madly in love with you. Jack was my love of my life. He died of a heart attack, just like that, when he was 29 years old. And I always miss him. He's still in my heart. I never got enough of him. I never get enough of the ones that I love. Madly in love with you. That line from Leonard Cohen, that beautiful song, there's a crack in everything, that's how the light comes in. That is a story of a broken heart, which I have, and that the light and love continues to come in in the most unexpected ways. Jack dying. That sent me on the process of discovering how is it possible that you can have a broken heart and you can still love life? How is that possible? And what I discovered is that laughter and tears go together. If you have ever cried so hard, you laughed or laughed so hard you ended up crying. You know they are totally related. And if you squelch your tears, you will squelch your laughter. They go together. That's one of the things my daughter taught me. It took me a very long time to allow my tears to come, and they always came in private because nobody cried around me. The message in those days was go on with your life. And one day I was in my broken heart, and I went to my room, and I was sitting on my bed, and I was sobbing, sobbing. And she came in, and she grabbed my head. My head was bigger than her whole body, and she put it down on her shoulder, and she patted, patted, patted me. And she says, Mom, it's okay to cry. You just go ahead and sit right here and have a good cry. But Mom, do you mind if I shut your door because you're really bothering me? <laughs> That's what I mean about laughter and tears go together. And so that, that little girl taught me something. Our children are here for a reason to teach us the ways of the heart, the things that we have forgotten. My heart is still broken. It never goes away. You cannot fix a broken heart. You can only love your broken heart. The best thing is to say, I'm, a, I'm struggling and I'm lost. And you can start saying that out loud. Guess what? There are people who can hear that. And that's how connection is made. Rather than talking about all the things that don't matter in life, which we spend a lot of time talking about the things that don't matter. We ask people, how are you? And they're expected to say, fine. Mm -hmm. 
but people are craving connection and meaningful conversations. You say, I'm struggling and I lost, I'm lost, and you share that with people, something will happen. Or if there's nobody to share it with, there might not be anyone to share it with. So you can share it with yourself. You can say, I'm struggling, I'm lost, I don't know what to do. And you might feel that way for a while, but it will go away if you can tell the truth. The truth will set you free. I was raised by a fundamentalist Christian. <laughs> the truth will set you free. And I think it's true. I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not. I just know that it makes me feel better to believe it. I've had many existential crises, and really I think I'm thankful for them all. It's not easy to go through them, but that is what life is about. Life is very difficult. It's also wonderful. There are things in life every single day that wash through you and you don't feel that broken heart, but you have to be awake. You have to be awake. You have to wake up in the morning. You have to wake up. You have to say, it is today. And there are good things that will come today. Everybody always says, oh, Judy, <laughs> you're so funny. You're so funny. Uh, you're always so optimistic. One of my friends says, I don't know. You always see the best in everyone. I say, you know, why not? I know that they're brokenhearted. Why don't I see the best in them? Why don't I say something to them that makes them laugh? And now that I'm almost 80, I'll be 80, starting my ninth decade in just a couple months. I am funnier, I'm getting funnier every year. And I get sadder too. I call myself a brokenhearted optimist and I am proud of it. I never thought I was creative. Well, if I thought I was creative, it was a secret that I had to myself. I didn't tell anyone I did creative things because it, I compared it to what they might be doing and mine was nothing. It still is nothing. If you ever compared it to somebody, it would be nothing, but I don't bother comparing anymore. I went to my first art class when I was in my 60s. And I'll tell you, those kids could draw. I couldn't draw. And I sat there the first day, and I said, I can't come back to this class. I'm never going to be able to draw. And, I, and then I said, no, you paid a lot of money. You're going back. I had to, talk, had to scold myself. And I went back. And I continued going back. And one day, the professor held up what I, my, quote, little cartoon that I was drawing. And it wasn't good. It wasn't g good. He drew for Disney, for heaven's sake. It wasn't good. But I noticed the look on his face. He was amused. And the people around me were amused. And I became amused. And I decided, I am going to be amused with myself. Being a doodling person, a person who doodles, is brings me so much joy. Life is a temporary miracle. I have changed that into life is a miracle. These are my doodleosophies. I'm happy for no good reason and I'm happy for every good reason. At 80, you don't have to have a reason for being happy.
death is coming. And when you can say that out loud to yourself, that is complete freedom. I'm not totally at peace because there's no heaven in heaven without my daughter in it. So that is, uh, I'm coming to peace with it. I don't cry anymore when I say it. I've never said that sentence to her, but her and I have talked a lot about my dying. That's an open subject because we don't want to leave anything unsaid. I told her, my wish, my only wish left is that I die before you do. And if I'm dead and you're alive, be happy for me. It's, it's, it's celebrate. That's what it means to be alive. We're here to celebrate. We have no idea what this planet is. I mean, the scientists seem to know it's something about something, you know, <laughs> but I don't understand it. People don't understand why. They don't even know how. It's a mystery, a total mystery. It's the greatest mystery there is. What are we doing here and why are we dying? Why do we have to die and leave the people we love? It's a total mystery. So we need to celebrate that we have the blessing of being in the midst of everything that's going on, and we need to celebrate it. Celebrating everything is what means to be alive. Thank you so much for watching the story all the way to the end. And a special thank you to all of you on Patreon who help us to make these films. If you want to join us on the journey, please click the link over here, I think. Uh, it just wouldn't be possible without you. Thank you.